38 years ago, a little old battle took place. God's Valley, the name of the island. For some unexplained reason, the world nobles and their slaves were present at God's Valley. And in order to protect them from Rox D. Zebek and his crew, Monkey D. Gop and Gold D. Roger teamed up to defeat Rox. I want to share some theories and discuss what the God's Valley incident really told us. Which, if I had three words to describe it all, I would choose best deception plan. And I condense all the topics I'm about to talk about in this little poem. The next level hockey, a next level betrayal. Shanks was one, Blackbeard was two. The best deception plan. Who's who? God's Valley might have told us that Conqueror's Hockey Coding is not the last advancement of hockey we'll see in the series. The best is to come. There's a distinct theme Oda chose to highlight in this battle, that hockey trumped Devil Fruits. The Rocks Pirates were a crew of the most powerful Devil Fruit users. Big Mom with a Soul Fruit, Shiki's Float Fruit, Whitebeard's Quake Fruit, Kaido's Fish Fruit, just to name the ones we know. So what is it that gave Roger and Gob the leg up here? And for the sake of this video, I want to focus on Roger. It seems Roger's specialty of Hockey is in his title, the King of the Pirates, Supreme King Hockey. Now, the way Conqueror's Coding works to my knowledge and research is by expelling spirit energy outward and focusing it on the body part. Because Conqueror's Hockey, in a way, is just a manifestation of spirit. On God's Valley, Roger was up against all these legendary Devil Fruit users and Roxy Zebek. Do you think he was just using Conqueror's Hockey Coding? And if he wasn't, is there any evidence in the story that indicates maybe a higher level tier of Conqueror's Hockey? I think there may just be. And yes, of course, it's speculative, but this could reveal something huge. Korozu. Sungi Hakita. Now, to the untrained eye, this means close to nothing. Shanks just has stronger Conqueror's Hockey. But look closer. Shanks is literally affecting the external environment around him, other than humans. As opposed to Luffy's Conqueror's Hockey, where he only conquers the spirit of those humans he wishes to. In simple terms, Conqueror's Hockey that we know of shouldn't affect the environment, since the whole concept of it is overpowering the will of living things. In this example, Shanks' Conqueror's Hockey is affecting wind, which then causes damage to a foreign object that is not human. Hockey that is so strong it can actually affect its external environment. But of course, who knows? Potentially a new form of hockey is completely different to what I mentioned. Or perhaps there are more facets to hockey mastery. So let me know down below what are your theories on the topic and I'll be sure to reply. But in the end, what I'm definitely not saying is that hockey trumps devil fruits in all scenarios. As of course, matchups matter. And I do think Roger and Gop together defeated Zebek. However, I theorize they very likely had external help. Pirates will betray you. Something may have happened at God's Valley that was considered a betrayal. People think that Kaido is talking about a betrayal in this way because he himself was betrayed at some point. But what if he himself witnessed a betrayal of none other than his beloved captain? At God's Valley, it said Roger and Gop won clearly. It's plain and simple. They took down Roxy Zebek and their crew. Potentially. I won't rule it out. However, I believe that's actually not the case. And one of the Rox pirates is an imposter. Which character do we know is good? Was on Rox's crew? Has a fruit that can destroy the world, so he can definitely destroy an island. Hmm, who could it be? The imposter. Whitebeard, I'm voting you out, because you're sus. For one, let's say it's the case that God's Valley actually did disappear and it's not some government cover-up. There is a devil fruit we know that can do this, and it happens to be Whitebeard's fruit, the devil fruit that can destroy the world. Kaido's quote, Pirates will betray you. When they know you'll lose, they'll abandon you and set sail. And combining this with how Big Mom saved Kaido's life at God's Valley by giving him the fish fruit reinforces that they both abandoned God's Valley on its collapse. One pirate betrayed, the others abandoned. Wipe it to Shanks, the wound I got from that guy still aches whenever I look at your face. God's Valley, 38 years ago. Shanks, 39. Shanks, an apprentice on Roger's crew. So the timeline, location, and in my opinion, the looks may fit for Shanks to be Rox's child. And who would give Whitebeard a wound? Roger, you might say. But Whitebeard wouldn't call Roger that guy. Maybe someone Whitebeard betrayed for the sake of the world. Someone strong enough to give Whitebeard that wound. Rox D. Zebek. Whitebeard to Gop. Don't fear his title. He's just another old Marine. Gop earned the title of the Hero of the Marines at God's Valley for being credited for defeating Rox. So if Whitebeard was one of the main players in Rox's defeat, his statement holds a lot of weight. And lastly, parallels. Odor loves his parallels. If Whitebeard did betray Rox on God's Valley, then ultimately it was Blackbeard who betrayed Whitebeard through killing Thatch and ultimately killing Whitebeard. Crewmate betrays Captain. So then when the Captain's inheritor becomes crewmate, he too betrays the Captain. That is, the Saber of Zebek. And this last point leads me on to my greatest potential truth about God's Valley. What were the Celestials after? What was Rox after? And what is the current generation after? What is their plan? What were the Celestial Dragons after at God's Valley? 
As the name suggests, I think it's something that holds godly importance in the One Piece world. We know in the Chaos of the Gods Valley incident, Kaido's legendary fish fruit was given to him on that day. Maybe it was found on the island. The Celestial Dragons are called Celestial Dragons and refer to themselves as God. So wouldn't this be the godly fruit? Not to mention King the Wildfire is a Lenarian, a god that lived atop of the Red Line that showed an attack identical to Kaido's fire dragon form. This may all just connect. Kaido's legendary dragon fruit, the Celestial Dragons, and the previous gods of this world who shared the same powers. I mean, Vegapunk was tasked with creating a replica of this fruit and this fruit alone. Maybe more of these godly fruits come from God's Valley. The Opi Opi no Mi comes to mind. Could there also be knowledge left inscribed on this island? Because over these 800 years, all they've seemed to have done is follow the gods previous. So this could also be one of the reasons they went to God's Valley, to find out more information about the previous gods of this world. I mean, what is it that makes you into a god? Invincibility, immortality, and knowledge. And I feel Rox's ambition is more simple. Dethrone the kings of the world to become the king of the world. Take what's there their knowledge, their fruits, and their secrets. Personally, I think his plans to our knowledge could be considered noble. He wanted to overthrow this corrupt world government. But then why would Roger and Gop intervene? The only logical conclusion I can come to here is that the world under the rule of Rox would be worse than the world under the Celestials. Rox de Sebeck's inspiration is likely from the 17th century pirate Rocher Brasiliano, known to be one of the cruelest pirates in existence. His bad temper also led to legends of him shooting anyone who would not drink with him. And roasting farmers on spits who did not surrender livestock. But in 1671, all traces of him disappear out of the blue. Some say he might have gone down in a storm. Some say he was captured. And some simply say he's living in secrecy. Nobody knows for sure. But to truly understand Zebek, we need to look at the inheritor of his will, the man that was two years old when God's Valley fell into ruin, Blackbeard. Blackbeard always had a plan. Ace, join me, conquer the world with me. I've already planned how to do it. And people forget, Blackbeard both introduced the term Haki in chapter 234 and was so strong without the Yami Yami no Mi. Ace offered Blackbeard the second division commander spot, but Blackbeard told him, I don't have the ambition. Of course, Ace was deceived, as he did have an ambition, and it said on his ship, the Saber of Zebek. Rox attained nothing in the end, his ambition of the King of the World was forgotten, but he never technically died, as someone came along to set the world to its original order, but will do absolutely anything to get it there. Destroy the world or fill it with darkness, it doesn't matter. And what do I mean by original order? If both Blackbeard and Luffy achieve their goal, technically, the D-Clan will rule once again. And maybe this was neither of their intentions in the first place. But it's what would happen if they both succeed their dreams. For Luffy, we don't even know what his true dream is. And Blackbeard, he said he wanted to become Pirate King. Luffy's dream is synonymous with being the freest man in the world. And Blackbeard's dream has something to do with having total control over the world. If one of them succeeds, the so-called gods of this world will fall from their thrones and the Ds will rule again. However, Zebek's dream might have just been a more straightforward method to restore the world to its original rule. A plan where it doesn't matter whether he tricks, deceives, or betrays. Anything for the end goal. From start to end, his entire journey is the best deception plan history will ever witness. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It helps out a lot. And if you want to check out some more One Piece content, check out this really quick video I did on Real 60 on why Shanks is very likely the biological son of Roxy Zebek.